Sup dudes. I have once again been continuously blessed by the gifts of our Plague Father Nurgle, as have those around me. And while I enjoy and relish the gifts of the Plague, I can't release more videos that I've been working on. But I wanted to do a quick follow-up to the Pantheon video and answer some of the questions that people have made in the comments, people saying things that I won't repeat because I think people shouldn't say libelous things about companies. But I want to go into the legality of Kickstarter MMORPGs and explain why I think everything the Visionary Realms has done is probably completely legal. Uh, you're never getting your money back and 24-7 is the game you're probably going to be stuck with. And to do that, we need to dive into the legality of another Kickstarter MMORPG, and that is the only one I know to have a prominent lawsuit, and that is the Chronicles of Illyria. I mean, how could it be anyone else? Then back up a bit. What is it you did that's got everybody's tongue wagging except mine? She said I had an unhappy love affair. So I said, was it one of my doctors? And she said, no, it was your priest. Colonel. So let's first start this off by making fun of a legal website that has an amicus function that's powered by Chad GPT. If you don't know, uh, check out. I think there's a really good Moist Critical video on it where he talks about the lawyers that use Chad GPT and they got disbarred and they ruined their life. There's been a rash of practical jokes lately. Whoever the perpetrator is, he or she is becoming a folk here. Because Chad GPT just makes things up. But anyways, let's let's get into the actual video. So I'm not going to bore you with all the legalese here. Let me break it down to its most fundamental components. Okay, so this dude, James, donates $20,000 to Chronicles of Illyria to be a baron or a lord or a king and whatever in that weird MMORPG, right? And then they announce they're closing down and never going to release the MMORPG. So he sues them, but him and his legal team know that he agreed in the terms and conditions that there would be no refunds and that he was just basically taking a chance on the game and that the game would be what it was. He's just basically throwing the money out there, right? So him or his legal team come up with the idea that they include with Soulbound Studios, the people that made the Chronicles of Illyria, Exola, the payment processor. Interesting stories about them. Maybe in another video, if you want to Google interesting stories about Exalt the Premium Processor, I'm sure you'll find many on YouTube not endorsing them, though. But anyways, so what he tries to do is he tries to include both the game company and the payment processor of his donations to that gaming company in the lawsuit as a single unit. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, because unlike the gaming company, the payment processor does offer refunds for lack of services. Now, if you're thinking, well, that kind of sounds like a bad argument. Just because a payment processor offers refunds for lack of services rendered, I mean, that's obvious that they're going to render that. But they're thinking about things like buying something on eBay and the person not sending it to you. They're not thinking about donating $20,000 to kickstart a game and the game just falling apart. And that's more or less what the judge said. The judge ruled that A, the two of them are not the same entity for legal purposes. And B, the judge ruled that he could not use certain aspects of the promises made by Soulbound Studios in the donation agreement as evidence that they should refund his purchase if in the very same agreement he also acknowledged the fact that he didn't get any refunds. And the judge basically said, Either the agreement you made with them is fair on their website when you made those huge donations, or it wasn't. If it wasn't, then none of it can be legally valid because it wasn't formed the right way. Think about the um, South Park episode involving iPhone agreements uh, with Apple, where those agreements are clearly spurious and false, but they can't both be true and false at the same time something you signed is either a valid document or it isn't a valid document and claiming both at the same time the long and short of it is that the judge laughed the platent out of the courtroom basically as far as i understand it if anyone has a background in legal stuff and wants to look up these case numbers i'll give them to you i'll link it in the in the um and the thing below but what i thought was really really interesting from all of this is a a lot of people 
in the sort of Kickstarter scam tuber space were all over this as if this was like a huge devastating lawsuit. It really wasn't. Um, there's been murmurs of class action stuff, but no, this was just a guy with a lot of money, enough to hire some attorneys who wanted some of his money back and was very angry. And they made arguments that even to me as a non-lawyer, but have, I have some knowledge of the logic of how these things are supposed to work, don't make they just don't hold muster. And the judge agreed with me for the same reasons that I thought they didn't hold any um, validity. It's not probably the legal term. Anyways, so what does this get us on to? So what I wanted to get on to from this is a lot of people were saying in the comments of my last video, oh my god, all these Kickstarter and MMORPGs are behaving in the same gosh darn way. And what do they mean by that? Well, they mean they promise a game, they do a lot of fundraising off art for the game, streams of the game, alphas of the game, streamers that are very supportive of the game, and drag their communities in to support the game. And everyone is saying, why are they all doing exactly the same thing? Well, I don't know this. This is just speculation. I'm not saying anything bad about any particular company. I'm just speculating if I ran a company like this with my knowledge of the law, what the sort of rationale would be. And it would be lawsuits like the one we saw with Chronicles of Illyria, where it's some dude just begging for money to be refunded when he didn't read the TOS properly by trying to lump different companies together is not going to be successful. And most judges are going to laugh it out of the ballpark. But what a judge might not laugh out of the ballpark is if there was a company that was taking money and had a history that could be backed up, say, by its own employees or outside observers or community managers was not really being spent to achieve the goal for which the Kickstarter backers had aimed. I.e., there needs to be a minimum viable product. You couldn't, for example, take thousands upon thousands of dollars in Kickstarter fees, start a free Unity project at home, and then just sort of meander around and say, sorry guys, my Unity project didn't work out. That is not a viable, um, not a viable thing to do legally. Because then we're not crossing into the realm of people wanting to talk about refunds. We're crossing more into the realms of people that do things like pretend they have cancer to get donations when they don't have cancer, which is, by the way, very illegal. Uh, Moist Critical just did a video on a woman that got arrested for that recently. Just like pretending to try and work or finish a game would be illegal. And by demonstrating these minimum viable products, these companies are removing any legal liability that they might have for not having um, worked on a game. They're making it very clear, even if it's an alpha, even if it's uh, a PvP testing realm, these are games that we have created and we have at least done our best on our side of the of the line to provide the customer a product for which they have donated we were not as it were faking to be in the midst of developing a game and as far as i can tell please if you know more about this than me get back to me in the comments below if you think there have been lawsuits felt like this but as far as i can tell every kickstarter mmr rpg that has failed has more or less been able to construct some minimum viable product that has basically made a lawsuit like that impossible. Um, and that's why I think nothing illegal at all has happened. A lot of immoral Kickstarters in the world of Kickstarters, but uh, in this case, I don't think anything lawsuitable has happened. And I just wanted to make that clear for my last video because a lot of people were very angry, understandably, but I don't really think there's anything you can do. Um, 24 7 is the game that you're going to get and it kind of sucks for you but that's what it is uh and i'll see you guys in the next video hopefully i'm feeling better i'm going to do some longer form uh more narrative stuff on internet history in the future i'm working on those but those videos take a long time and a lot of research if you enjoyed this like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video peace